Derek Waters. Hi. Hi, thanks for being with us here at Comic-Con. Thank you for having me. You're here with Drunk History. I am here with Drunk History. There's no other reason for me to be here. Well, that's not necessarily true. You kind well, of have your fingers in a lot of pies all throughout Hollywood. True, true. I got a lot of pies, yeah. <laughs> but none of them uh, send me to Comic-Con except for Drunk History. So how does one do a Drunk History panel at Comic-Con? Well, I'm going to do it in a way where I'm going to have my friends like Jack McBrayer, Duncan Trussell, Steve Berg, and Mae Whitman up on stage with me, and I'm going to show some stories that no one's seen, and then a little sneak peek to season four to get people all excited for the best season of Drunk History, I say in my deadpan voice. <laughs> How many fans come to a panel like that and demand that someone be drunk on stage? About four. About four? No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think they all would like it, but this is a kid's show. We know that. Comic-Con is all ages, so. It says that right on your little placard. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I know, as we had to put censors in the episode, <laughs> which is fine. So it's been, how many years is Drunk History now? This is its fourth season, but it uh, started on the internet in 2007. Yeah, 2007, yeah. Can you believe this many years you're still doing no. it? No, no. What is it about... <laughs> This, I mean, because I remember when we, it first was like being viral and being passed around. What do you think it is about this series that makes people constantly keep tuning back in? I humbly think the comedy makes them laugh, but what makes it continue to uh, be something that people are interested in is the stories, is finding the best stories that, for whatever reason, weren't told to us in school. So that's my goal, is like the comedy gets you in, but the history hopefully keeps you watching, I say humbly. <laughs> yeah. uh, when you first started, it was kind of a little greatest hits like Abraham Lincoln, yeah. Frederick Douglass, but <clears> now <throat> it seems to be going deeper and deeper into history. Like, what yeah. are we hitting in the new season? All like themes, They're only doing themes. No cities, like Great Escapes, learning about Timothy Leary escaping prison. Like, there's just more stories that are just like, oh wow, I've been given this gift where I'm allowed to tell stories. Why tell stories that we've already heard? And like Lincoln, like, we get it, you were pretty cool, but let's find some other cool people. And, you know, naturally, you go to Timothy Leary after that. <laughs> yeah, obviously. We'll go yeah. straight to Timothy Leary yeah. from Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, it's a yeah. natural progression. So, there. yeah, we have a Hamilton episode and Lin-Manuel Miranda is drunk telling the story of Hamilton. And uh, that's something brand new that I'm really excited about. We have an episode called Shit Shows. Bob Odenkirk gets drunk and talks about uh, the disco demolition in Chicago. Oh, wow. Is, yeah, so it's the world is bigger and it's not just all, like, history stories or classic history stories what do lynn and bob drink lynn drank whiskey and uh bob drank uh what did he drink um he drank uh tequila what was it yeah he had tequila shots and uh vodka soda dang yeah that's impressive yeah he doesn't drink so it was really <laughs> impressive he doesn't drink at all and then he no goes he hard. did it for the show it was really sweet oh Really yeah, nice I know. Him. He's you my nervous? hero. Of course, I was nervous. <laughs> yeah. Because it's Bob, or because it's Bob, and he's also drinking for the first time in a while. Yeah, it's Bob, and it's like taking care of your favorite baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What have you learned in the many years? You know, taking care of all many don't drunk drink. people. Don't drink. So, so <laughs> are you learned. completely sober now? No, no, no. I can't. I legally can't be sober. <laughs> but I, uh, no, I've learned that it's a poison, and that you have to be careful to excess. That it just makes you feel bad if you do it if you drink too much that no matter what or who the person is they always apologize the next day i'm like no you're fine you told the story no i don't re i know you don't remember but you did it i promise you so i've learned don't drink too much do you suffer from drunk guilt no no really? I, I thank my therapist every day for that well once a week i thank her but um yeah no i don't have drunk guilt but i think when it first started i did i was like oh, i feel so bad but I'm like, no, this is a job. You become like desensitized to it. Yeah. Well, I'm sensitive to them, and right. I'm yeah, I'm I'm fine with it now. I I still want them to be okay, and I, yeah, I'm protected. Has history always been something that you were passionate about? I loved. I who doesn't like good stories? But I also just loved my history teacher in high school, Mr. Stang, who was just knew how to tell a story in a cool way, like when we didn't want to hear about history would be like so what what's wrong with the baltimore orioles mr stang and he would go off for 40 minutes and then somehow tie in the orioles to like the historical figure we were learning about i'm like man that was so cool he just made me learn something without even knowing it so that's my like 
hope is that I can secretly teach people without knowing they're being taught. So when you're going in to do like the Lynn Manuel Miranda mm -hmm. episode, do you give him a script or are you just like tell me Hamilton? I said I want you to tell the stuff that you didn't get to put in the musical. Like there's stuff that you know you can't fit into that show, and so and it's more Hamilton and Burr's duel and like different duels that weren't talked about in the musical. Of just like I want I never want people to feel like they're doing homework. I want them to be like wow, I'm getting to talk about something I truly love and like no one knows it more than me. And so he knows Hamilton pretty well. Since he knows it so well and since he has, I assume, is drinking in this, yeah. does he like accidentally start just kind of getting lyrical in it? Uh, there, Yeah, there's there's some little lyrics in there. Yeah, yeah. But I, I was cautious and so was he. Like I didn't want him to feel like, okay, now just do the drunk Hamilton. Yeah, perform um, for me. Yeah, yeah. just, yeah. There's small little tidbits of it, but not much, yeah. What do you, I feel like when you start digging into history, like, it must be, do people constantly ask you, like, historical questions or for you to fact check things now? Yeah. I just go, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't or is, know. what happens more, people asking you historical questions or people asking to be on the show? Being on the show. How often are you approached to be on the show? Uh, well, usually, you know what I've learned is people, it's hard for people to go, I should be on the show. What they'll do is they say, you gotta meet my buddy. He's <laughs> he's legend. <laughs> you got, he would tell the story, and I just oh that's cool. Thank you. But it's hard to tell a story sober or drunk. So I have to pick people I already know, not random people that are apparently funny at the office. <laughs> and apparently funny at the office when they're drunk. Exactly, Except, which yeah. are the, my favorite workers. <laughs> just drunk people in an office. You did a whole season where you kind of went, you went to the towns of mm -hmm. where it was, and you talked to the locals. I yeah. mean, do you, what was it about that season that you enjoyed, and would you it's ever go back to that? It's always been like that. This is the first season I didn't do it. All three seasons was going to the cities. Just, I think it was, did you say what did I like about that? Or yeah, what? and why did you I, stop doing it? I love doing it. It was a way in to prove that it wasn't just a five-minute short. I wanted to prove, like, oh, it's a half-hour show. You're going to cities. You're meeting people. Like, there's different colors to the episode but now I felt like it takes forever to do that stuff and people just want to watch good stories I didn't feel like oh we got to do this and when you're limited when you do like a Nashville episode you can only do stories about Nashville this way I'm like these are three amazing stories I'll figure out what the theme of them are but I miss I love meeting people so I miss that part a little how has the success of this show changed your life well, I got these glasses. Yeah, those those real glasses that are real. <laughs> so real. Um, how has it changed my life? I don't know. I I, I I'm happy. <laughs> it's good. brought me a lot. It's brought me work and meeting some of the most amazing people in my life that I've always looked up to, and yeah, it's a dream come true. How has it changed you as a director and a producer? Mm, I'm excited for my next project because it won't be uh, this hard. This, this, how is this, this how is this harder than like another project? Because it's like three shows. You gotta get researchers, then you do the narrators, and like drinking with them is really hard. And then editing that, writing the scripts, then scouting and getting the actors, and then shooting consecutively for you know three months and. Uh, just doing it all is really hard, but I love it. I wouldn't change it for a second, but I've learned uh, patience. Patience? Yes. So what is your next project? I don't know. Not anything to do with drinking or history. <laughs> You're yeah, done. I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to see where this goes, and then I'll do something brand new. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's cool. I'm excited to see what it is. Thanks, Meredith. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Me too. Thank you for your time. This work. Hello? Bye. <laughs>